Oh, good morning. Today we're coming to you from beautiful, sunny southeast Iowa. It may be sunny, but it's cold and there's about six inches of snow on the ground. So we're working inside today. You may have seen some of the other videos where we showed the inside of the building and what we're doing inside here. Basically, we have a large shell, not a building shell, and we're building some interior walls and spaces in order to make it somewhat livable. Um, the idea is to live in here while we build the real house out on the farm. Uh, we have all of the interior walls up except for one final wall. The wall is about 11 foot long and 8 feet tall. And we put that up and put up the ceiling joists and that room will be enclosed. And that'll be the last of the framing for the interior living spaces. First, we're going to be building this wall. It's 11 feet long, so we have two sections. So, what I'm going to do is do the 8 foot wall and then the 3 foot wall. Now, set up, we have a work table here. It's 8 feet long, it's a 4 by sheet of plywood and saw horses. The wall itself is going to be 8 feet this way. And so, a 4 foot piece of plywood. Is it going to support it? We have another board back here, a piece of two by four to act as a, a support, and it's going to be holding uh, the edges of the, the wall studs and the uh, top plate or snow plate, whichever you want to, whichever way it goes. So the first thing to do is load up this this workbench with the wood, plot with the two by fours and uh, get them in place as ready to now. Okay, we got the table loaded up with wood. We got our top and bottom plates here. We got studs going this way. They're on the table. They're also supported on the far end by that, um, by that workbench. Got a couple of two by fours across it to provide support. First thing we do is measure the 16 inch on center. Centers. Drop it over there. Take out our marking pen. And we're going to mark both the top and the bottom at the same time. Find our 16 inch. Assuming it's going to work. Find our 16 inch mark. Come down here for 32. So now we're ready to nail. I'm going to take. Uh, we're going to take this piece of wood. It's going to be used for the other side, and we'll lay it down here under the way. It's an old touch I've had for quite a while. And we just lay it up here, get your fingers out of the way, and nail it. You notice I'm not wearing eye protection? Yeah, that's a risk I take. But I also close my eyes on a pull the trigger. Okay, air compressor kicked off. So now we can continue on. We got this last board nailed in place. You need to nail the other boards. I'm not going to be able to get behind them on the other side because of all the stuff I have over there. So pull it off. All right, we got the, uh, that plate on. We got the boards flipped around. <coughs> got uh, the edges pulled back. So that they're on supported on this side on the workbench. What I've done, I've taken a two by four, turned it on the side so the four inch face is, is parallel or horizontal. That gives support for both these edges of the, of the studs and support for the plate. All set now is nailing in place. And this wall is done. When you nail these, <coughs> be sure that this edge, or the edge you're using as reference to the mark for your 16 inch center, is the same on this side and this side. In other words, if you got 16 inch marks down there, line up the faces of, of these boards with that mark, and you want on that side, if you're using this face of the board to line up with the mark, you want to be sure and use this face of the board 
fly up with this mark. If you don't, the, uh, the studs aren't going to be vertical, and you get some some twisting in it. Um, it's not going to be pretty, and there's going to be a lot of problems later on as you do that. Now the board's bailed up together. What we need to do is tilt it up vertically, and then move it down to uh, the positions where it's going to be placed. It's a lot easier with two people. Unfortunately, my helper had to work today. She has a real job. So, that takes priority. That's alright though. It can get done by one. I'm going to move it down there, move the camera, and we'll see you in a little bit. Okay, cut the wall in place. What's up? What's important here is that this wall meets up with and continues evenly and, and smoothly with this previous wall. So this stud on the new wall needs to align well and perfectly with the stud, vertical stud on the old wall. That means top and bottom need to be even. And then the most important, right here we got a little bow in this piece of wood, that's okay. That can be taken care of. That can be accommodated a lot easier than big bumped out uh, on the top or the bottom. If everything looks good, we're going to Nail it in place. Now, that gives us a known point that we know is good. We know that this board and this stud is exactly where it needs to be. We don't know where that one needs to be. So it could be off like this or it could be off like that. We don't know. What I did before we started working on this and I took a laser level at the back of that wall and it shines a line, vertical line. And I lined it up so that it was evenly offset along the bottom plate on that wall. And that extended all the way out, came down here. It was measured the same distance all the way down this way. It came all the way down and hit the, the wall, the vertical wall over there. And I put marks on that wall where the line hit. So we've got a mark at the bottom on that bottom plate. We've got a mark at the top plate over there. And I've got one down the insulation. The insulation can move back and forth. I'm not going to follow it. But we're going to shoot for and target the bottom, the marks on the bottom and the top. We know that's vertical. We know they're one above, vertically one above each other. And we know that they are the same distance from, or we're going to make them the same distance from this wall as they were from that wall and that means that these lines will be continuous. One way we're going to do that is to use a string. And I'll be right back, I'll set it up and be right back with you. Okay, welcome back. <clears throat> what I've done is down far into that wall on that first stud the bottom, put a little nail in the end of it Tied a loop in, in the string and wrapped it around that nail, hooked it over that nail. Now I'm going to pull this string tight and pull it along the side of that wall. Now you could have done that instead of the laser level if you didn't have one. I haven't had one and have to justify the purchase of it by using it. So, yes dear, I do use the laser level. Now, if I side along this string, if I pull it tight, I'm pulling it tight with my foot because I don't like bending over. I can't talk to you like this, you're not going to be able to see anything. But I wrap it around my foot, pull it tight like that. And I side along it and bring it back and forth until it is touching that wall all the way up and down it. Then I know right there where that string is, is where that mark needs to go. And Get it back on there again, and if I look at it, that mark is right where it's supposed to be. 
So I know this string is level and parallel to, or is an extension of the previous wall. So I'm coming up this one. Move it out of the way so you can see it. Come up to this one and line it up again with that wall. And I can see that it's off a bit. So I can just pull this wall over until it is on that string. And now I know that the bottom plate is a straight continuation of the previous wall all the way up to here. Through the string, put it aside. We know that this wall is a straight continuation of the previous wall. You know where we're supposed to be. We'll nail it here so it doesn't move. All I have left is this little bit piece here. We're going to do it the same way, exact same way, only it's going to be this foot wide instead of that foot wide. We know that this end is where it needs to meet up. On this side we'll have the advantage that we have a mark down there, a mark up there. We know those are directly above, they are plumb to each other. So we put this corner in, we know that this corner lines up with that wall. We know that this corner lines up with that corner, it's going to be vertical. And then we can just meet, mesh these two together and, uh, and, and that'll be the end of this wall. Well, I thought I was finished filming for the day. We saw me do that 8 foot section wall. And uh, I thought that it was just another 11 feet total <clears throat> that I measured along the ground. You saw me do that 8 section foot wall. And I thought there was just another 3 feet left. And I didn't think it would be very interesting to show you just at 3 feet doing the same thing, only in 3 feet wide through 8. Then I realized <coughs> this wasn't the normal house. So this is the one that's kind of weird in, in Iowa. And <coughs> the walls are like a kind of stove away. They, they kind of kind of go out at the end. So I got to looking at it and, and it is 38 and three quarters inches at the bottom. And it is 44 and three quarter inches, eight feet off the ground. So that's a six foot difference in eight feet. And it's just not playing the little three foot wall of the other foot. So, I figured I'd, I'd let you in on what we're doing here and how we're handling it here. Uh, may not be the right way, but for us it's good enough. What I did was take, take the measurements I made here today and cut a piece of wood 2x4 at 38 and 3 quarters, and then another one at 44 and 3 quarters, and put them out here and I'm going to measure 16 inches off the edge of this edge for uh, a stud. We could go put another one in here at 32, but remember this is not a structural wall. The only thing this is going to be doing is holding up drywall, and it's got a little platform on top of it, and there may be some storage up there, but it's not like it's going to be holding up a roof and uh, any significant structural part of the house. So I think I'm going to forego another stud in here at 32 inches. We'll, uh, I've made a mistake, we'll have to see. But I'm measuring from that edge, from this edge over here, this is going up against the existing wall, and this edge will be going up against the, the outside exterior wall. So measure 16 inches from that edge, I'm going to measure 16 inches from the same edge. It's important because that gives us the it gives us the stud going vertical and pump and parallel to the existing studs. Again, we're going to let this one hanging out. It's 44 three quarter inches from from the uh, from the edge over there. If we put in another stud, it would have been here. And this uh, 10 inches, uh, 8 inches with the, uh, with the stud with calculated in there. I think this will support everything okay. 
So this is how we're going to do it. This is how we're going to work, uh, work with this one. So we've got everything in place. All right, that's all we're going to do for this. I'll get over there and we'll put it up and see how it fits. Okay, we're back down here. I'm looking at the job. It was a little more complicated than I thought it'd be. What we need is a nailer in here. When we put this wall coming in up, it's going to be in here. Something like that. And we can nail it to the top, bottom, across the floor. That would probably be okay. But remember this, this wall is going to be a corner where a drywall comes together. We're going to have a wall coming in here, we're going to have a wall coming in here. This light is a nailer for this side, but there is nothing in the corner here to act as a nailer for this wall, for this wall coming in this way. So we're going to put in a piece of, another piece of 2 by 4 It's going to have to go in there like that. And it's going to have to go over enough such that when this new wall comes in, that stud lays up against it. We've got some room here to nail in. On the other side of this wall is also an interior wall. And it's going to be, in this area here, it's going to be kitchen cabinets. Now, you don't have to draw a wall behind a kitchen cabinet, but you might want to for a number of reasons. So we're going to. And that means that we're going to need another nailing surface on this side. So we're going to need to put two two by fours in here to act as nailing surfaces. With all of a sudden enough, and of course these walls, these two by fours on the street, and there's something like that. Act as nailing surfaces. And we're going to put it in front of this insulation. We're not going to make a break in the insulation, that way it stays insulated. We don't have a cold spot here. So, with at the edge of the new wall coming in here, we want at least an inch and a half of space along here to nail into. So we're going to put the mark we made down here where the edge of that wall is supposed to be, it's supposed to come in. We're going to put it in the center of this 2x4. We're going to toenail it in place. And then we're going to put the other one up against that. You'll see what I'm talking about here in just a second. First, we'll make sure we're nice and level down there and we're in the right spot. You know, I ladders, that means I gotta let it hang there. I never not like to let things hang without support, back up of some kind. One time I did that, I had a, a rafter fall down on me, hit me upside the head, knocked me out. I was out in the woods all by myself. I was doing some homesteading out there and I was building a house by myself. And uh, knocked me out. Got a big gash in my head. That wasn't fun. So now, I laid there for a while. Doctor said, uh, lucky I didn't die. But, uh, that's all right. Somebody's looking out for me. Now we're going to do the same thing up here. We're going to put nails in there to put that 
please. And we're going to take this one, put it in right beside it, even though it's warped. Turn it this way so the warp doesn't affect us as much. Yeah. I know you're not supposed to put toenails in the face of the board. It leaves a lump here. And if you're drywalling, the lump will stick out. It'll also get in the way of any near the board you stick up there. But right now, I didn't couldn't get the other side of it, so. We're going to have to let that go. Same thing down here. I get to the edge on one side, but not the other. Now, let me show you what I mean here when this comes in. Now, I'm breathing a little heavy, but it's getting over cold. I'll suggest you can't hardly. Get a breath, but that's okay. At least I'm still breathing. So this wall, as you can see, is not square. We got a big angle going up on that side. Like I said earlier, it's a constant and wagon. And this was cut and sized to fit very tight. So we're going to have to do some labeling in here to get it to get it working right, fitting right. I think I'll do it this way. Put that edge in place. Slide this over. Slide it in place. Get a bit of a persuader here to, to help make a decision. Okay, so that's where that edge needs to be at the bottom. That's where that edge needs to be at the bottom. Injections in the middle here. There we go. That top edge where it needs to be. This one's come off. Bring it back. This one needs to come down a bit. down here has been nailed in place so this side is exactly where it needs to be so we're gonna line up this new wall with it this keeps moving around with this so we're gonna Put a nail down here. That corner's where it needs to stay. So it's going to stay right there. Now we're going to find up where it needs to go. So we'll make sure it stays there. And we're going to nail this board in place. So we got this board in place, it's nailed to both of these nailers, so they're not going anywhere. It's nailed at the top, it's nailed at the bottom, the board's nailed down here. So this edge, these two corners 
are set. They're where they're supposed to be. And we'll line this other one up. And it needs to be lined up the last stud of this mold. And that's a little easier to get to. You get everything else nailed down. So that's lined up. That's not going anywhere. So that's the name of that tune. We'll see y'all later.